So thank you very much. I'm actually not going to talk to you about Gabon because yesterday I came home from a quite different place. I came home from Venice and I want to talk to you about Venice. You may wonder why. Is Venice a landscape or is it a waterscape or what is actually the thing that landscape comprises? What, what we did in Venice was that we had a board meeting, we were discussing all sorts of things, and then we went out and saw some forests. You might think, are there forests in Venice? And actually, not really, because that land around Venice has been populated for thousands of years. There's been towns built, there's been agriculture, there's been drainage. It's all cultivated. But now, people see that actually that landscape is not very healthy. And what they do is they begin to think, ah, could we do some forest in this place? Could we plant some trees? And would that actually have an effect? And what's interesting about that is two things. One is when you come from a landscape with nothing and you begin to put trees in it, then from the very beginning, your trees are thought as part of the landscape. They're not just thought as we, as a Forest Stewardship Council, certifying forest. We think of forest as the area we manage, right? And the area we manage, we manage because of what's in it. There's trees, there's mushrooms, there's other products that are in that forest. And we don't necessarily see what the function of that forest is for the wider landscape. But in the area around Venice, where they're not used to have forest, the fascists took out the last ones in the 1930s. There, they suddenly see, ah, we need to have some trees here because we don't have them and we need them. And why do they need them? And that's the next interesting point. That when you begin to think about forests as something different from just production, and that's what they do, because they think of them as, oh, we need some clean water. Oh, we need to get something that can get us rid of the noise and the pollution from the autobahn and that go from Germany all the way down to southern Italy with all sorts of products going one way and the other. Oh, we need something to deal with the carbon. Oh, we need something to have a place for our children to go out and look at what is a forest. Oh, there's a squirrel, there's a bird, there's bird song, there's all of these things. And these forests get established for not the production, they will also produce some timber once in a while, but actually they get established for what we call ecosystem services that they provide. And those ecosystem services are not, I mean, one of the forests I was in was three and a half hectares, right? That's 300 meters that way and 120 that way, right? Not a very impressive one. We, we, we joked a little bit. Are we going to get lost here? We didn't. Luckily, that would be very embarrassing. But that's three and a half hectares, which, I mean, at a global scale, we have 200 million hectares certified under FSC, so that three and a half hectares are not going to make any difference from that perspective. But did they make a difference for the water in that area? Actually, that forest, which was designed to do that, sucked up a million cubic meters of water per year, put it down into sandy soils below the forest, and then spread to the whole area as clean water. Interestingly, who paid for this? This was not the owner and then he paid the trees and stuff like that, no. The payment for this, and this is where it gets interesting, that ecosystem service of the water was paid for by local retailers, the municipality, the water board, the water service provider, and they actually paid for the trees, for the certification, for all of the management of the area for the next 20 years until it may become self-sustaining by means of the wood that it will produce. I found that fascinating because that actually gave us the reason why we have that forest in that landscape, which is tree, yes, but even more than that, the landscape values that it would create for people living in that neighborhood. And my sense is that if we begin thinking forests, not just as timber production, not just as somewhere you go and have a nice experience, but as somewhere that plays a role for the wider land. We all know it. I mean, we all know that forests, without forests, we're not going to solve the climate crisis, right? We know that. 
But how do you actually make that link? That's a very abstract link. But if you make the link between the forest you have there and the landscape just around it, that's a very different thing. So over the past couple of years, we have developed what we call the ecosystem services procedure. That sounds utterly boring, and of course it is, but it has potential. The ecosystem services procedure is what gives you that next step, not just we know, yes, we know that forests matter for climate. Yes, we know that forests matter for biodiversity. Yes, we know that forests matter for water. But it gives you that next level of being able to document, to verify, and to be able to know what can you say to ordinary people in the market who are interested in these things. So these forests, as I said, get paid for by supermarkets, by ordinary people who adopt a tree or something like that, the water board, everybody. And it comes from experience that is not just valid in Italy. The whole idea comes out of a project where we tested ideas in Vietnam. The pictures you see behind me are from Chile. So we tested Vietnam, Chile, Indonesia, Nepal, no rich countries, but all of these poor countries. And now, as, now I've seen it yesterday, it works in the rich countries, and it also works in a number of poor countries where people need these resources. And when you come to it, as I say, from this ecosystem services angle, you immediately are in the midst of a landscape where these ecosystem services matter for everything that's around it, whether it's like it was in Chile, a cattle farm, a cattle ranch, whether it's as it was in Indonesia, agricultural or aquaforestry landscapes around it, whether it's degraded lands around the forest, it doesn't really matter. Because if you can have the forest and you can create those values, then you have a situation where your forest belongs in the landscape, the people see it, the people benefit from it, and you can get somebody different from the government, different from the normal donor, to actually pay for it in the end. So for us, coming into the Global Landscapes Forum, the ecosystem services procedure is probably the main instrument that we will use to take thinking about landscapes into doing landscapes. I saw it in Venice on three and a half hectares. I'm going to Brazil tonight. I hope to see this in more than three and a half hectares in Brazil. At least they have the potential, they have the forest area that could make that happen. And I'm really looking forward to see how we, as an organization, as the Forest Stewardship Council, can make the ecosystem procedure be something that will benefit landscapes all over the world. Thank you very much.